All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to calculate the Gaussian integral using the gamma function. So it's really, really cool. It's the most radioactive way, if you like, of doing the Gaussian integral. And again, I would like to thank Keith Conrad for coming up with the notes, because I took it from those notes, and it's really cool. So, what, it depends on what's called the gamma function. So what is the gamma function? If you, i like to remind you, it's gamma x is just the integral from zero to infinity of the integral of some function with respect to t, and that function is t of x minus one, e of negative t. And it's really the good analog of factorial because it turns out for integers, you have gamma of n, you can calculate it inductively to be n minus one factorial. So it's a good way of doing it and it involves, and it allows us to calculate the Gaussian integral because look, on the one hand, let's calculate gamma of one half. So gamma of one half equals to, well, let's see, integral from zero to infinity. If you let x to be one half, then this becomes one over square root of x. So e of minus t over, sorry, square root of t, dt. And well, we wanna sort of transform t into something squared and we wanna get rid of this square root of t. So this calls for a, a change of variables. So x equals to square root of t, then dx is one over two square root of t dt. So in other words, dt is two square root of x dx. Uh, sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today. So uh, dt is two square root of t dx, but that's just 2x dx. The point is it'll cancel out with this square root of t. And finally, uh, if t is 0, x is 0. If t is infinity, x is infinity. So the bound zone change. And we get integral from 0 to infinity, e of negative x squared. Again, square root of t is just x, and then 2x dx x's cancel out, and we get two times the integral from zero to infinity of e of negative x squared dx. And if you'd like, it either becomes two times j, the half Gaussian integral, or just the full Gaussian integral. So it turns out our Gaussian integral is nothing else than gamma of one half. And therefore, to calculate the Gaussian integral, let's find another way of calculating gamma of one half. Well, let's see. It's all based on the following identity. So on the other hand, there's this beautiful formula that says, that sort of relates gamma of x plus y in terms of gamma x, gamma y. And it's the following gamma x times gamma y over gamma of x plus y equals to integral from 0 to 1, t to the x minus 1, 1 minus t to the y minus 1 dt. I think sometimes it's called like b of x comma y. I forgot the name of it. But <laughs> it turns out this is true. And how can we use that to calculate our Gaussian integral? Well, let's just let x and y to be one half. So x equals to one half, y equals to one half. Then first of all, gamma of x plus y, that just becomes gamma of one. So one half plus one half is one. But remember, gamma of n is n minus one factorial. So it's zero factorial, which is one. On the other hand, this becomes gamma of one half times gamma of one half, so gamma of one half squared. And so it all boils down to calculate this integral. So integral from zero to one, t to the one half minus one, 
So t of minus 1 half, so 1 over square root of t, and 1 minus t to the minus 1 half, so 1 over square root of 1 minus t dt. And it turns out you can evaluate it using a very beautiful trig substitution. So let t be sine squared of theta. And the reason is square root of t becomes sine of theta. Square root of 1 minus t, it's square root of 1 minus sine squared, which is square root of cosine squared, which is just cosine. So it's absolutely beautiful. And so t equals 2 sine squared theta, so dt becomes 2 sine theta cosine theta d theta. And lastly, if t is 0, then we get 0 equals to sine squared theta. So the easiest value would be 0. And if t is 1, 1 equals to sine squared theta. And again, the sine of theta is plus or minus 1. Let's just assume because, uh, let's just assume for sake of simplicity that it's sine of theta, then sine of theta is 1. And the easiest value that makes this true is theta equals to pi over 2. So, what this becomes in the end is integral from 0 to pi over 2. 1 over square root of sine squared, again, assuming things are positive, it just becomes sine. Square root of 1 minus t, it's square root of 1 minus sine squared, which is square root of cosine squared, which is cosine. And we also have this dt, which is, lo and behold, 2 sine of theta cosine theta dt. And here comes a beautiful thing. Sines and cosines, they cancel out. And in the end, we have the integral of 2 from 0 to pi over 2. So it becomes 2 times pi over 2. And that's just pi. So... On the one hand, gamma of 1 half equals to i. On the other hand, I guess gamma squared equals to pi. So gamma of 1 half is square root of pi. So again, uh, gamma of 1 half squared equals to pi, and well, gamma function is positive in this case, so gamma of 1 half is square root of pi. So again, let me do that again. On the one hand, gamma of 1 half is i. On the other hand, gamma of 1 half is square root of pi. So i equals to gamma of 1 half equals to square root of pi. So the Gaussian integral, the full one, is just square root of pi. Beautiful, isn't it? It might be circular reasoning. I'm sure at some point you may use a Gaussian integral to derive one of those identities, but it's still a neat fact. All right, so if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.